Now that we've explored how to display points on the map, we can give the user more information about those points. Info windows are pop-up displays which are shown at a given location, either with or without a marker. They're great for giving context, such as text describing a location or showing images related to it. Creating an info window works very similarly to the marker in that we'll use an object and several basic parameters. Creating a new info window instance only requires that we put some content into the info window, a string or a predefined set of elements. The info window though, unlike the marker, won't open automatically. We need to add one more thing to tell it when and where to open. We're adding an event listener so that the info window only opens when we click on the marker. Within the event listener, we'll call the infowindow.open method, passing in the map on which to open and optionally the marker on which to anchor it. If we didn't pass in a marker, we would need to give the info window a position property so that it has a place to open. So if we click on the marker, we can see our lonely info window. But we want to show a whole bunch of locations. We don't want to show the user just one house. I'm going to delete our single point marker and info window. So here we've created an array of objects with some listing titles and a bunch of lat longs in the initialize function so that we have all of the information we need in the browser. In your own projects, we'd recommend using a database and serving the information to your site. There are a bunch of features of the API that allow you to easily render large amounts of data onto your map. You can read more about them in the link in the instructor notes. For now, since we only have a few points, we're just going to keep the data in the browser. Now, instead of creating one marker, we'll make a whole bunch of them out of this information. We'll add a blank marker array globally, since we'll have only one of these for the listings in our site. Then, we'll loop through the locations we created in order to create one marker per location. We'll keep each newly created marker instance in the markers array to keep them organized. Now, we want an info window to appear when any one of the markers is clicked, and we want the content to reflect that marker. So, we'll add an onClick event to each marker. We'll make a separate function, passing in the marker that was clicked, which is this, and the info window that we created on initialize here. This function is essentially going to tell the info window to open at that marker and populate with information specific to that marker. We'll create this function below. Each time one of our listing markers is clicked, this populate info window function is going to be called. Essentially, all this is doing is setting the content of the info window to the marker's title and opening the info window on that marker. Finally, we may have listings that are outside the initial zoom area, and we want to be able to adjust the boundaries of the map to fit everything that we want the user to see. So, we'll create a new lat long bounds instance, which captures the southwest and northeast corners of the viewport. Then, we'll extend it for every marker that we make. And finally, we'll tell the map to fit itself to those bounds. Voila! We have a very basic listings app. If I click each marker, a brief description of the listing shows above that marker. Once you can do that, there's a crazy number of things you can do. Change your markers to be custom icons, put images, links, and other information into the info windows, and more. If I wanted to, I could change all of my markers to be pictures of Ajay's head. But on a serious note, let's make one more improvement before we move on.